every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Go back over there to the book of Hebrews. Verse 6 of the first chapter, again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, let all the angels of God worship him. Now, I don't know whether you realize this or not, but these are the words that God spoke when he raised him from the dead. Amen. Amen. So, because Again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. Look at the eighth verse. But unto the son he saith, or he said, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. What is a scepter? A king and his scepter in court where the common person had no right to speak and some sort of serious trial is being conducted. And the handmaiden has evidence but she's not allowed to speak. <clears throat> she's in the king's court. And she's, hello, I was there. I was there. And the king says, let her speak. Now, when he pointed that scepter at her, she became equal in the king's court. And when I cried out to God with one simple phrase, Jesus, come into my heart on the second day of November, 1962, the scepter of righteousness was pointed at me and I became equal with Jesus. So my words in the court of heaven count. And so do yours. Yes. Amen. Because we've been named after him according to <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3. Yes. <laughs> Conferred upon him. Conferred upon him. And that <laughs> oh, under the throne under the sun, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. And, and, and I see Jesus, when he came in and presented it, that's what the book of Hebrews is about. He said to Mary, I, don't touch me. I have not yet uh, uh, appeared to my God and your God. The heavenly utensils of worship had to be cleansed yes. with his blood. Yes. yes. Adam's sin... <clears throat> Adam was God of this world. And then his lease on this earth, he just gave it away and just handed it to the devil. <clears throat> and they lost the blessing. And God immediately set out to get that blessing back and in full power. And he needed the power of the name. He had to have a name. We had to have a weapon. <clears throat> they didn't have that weapon in the first covenant, but David used it because he was a covenant minded man. What did he say to the giant? 
who was nine feet nine or something. It was his size that frightened everyone. David, just a young teenager, we know he's less than 20 because if he'd been 20, he'd been in the army. No, he said, King, I will kill him. He didn't say, I'm going to try to kill him. He said, I'll kill him. This uncircumcised Philistine, oh, 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 I mean, he qualified the whole battle right there. This uncircumcised Philistine, <laughs> he doesn't have a chance against me. So what did David say? I come at you, I come to you in the name of the Lord God of hosts. The God, the Lord God of hosts, the God of hosts. You find it scattered out all the way through that first covenant. The Lord God of hosts, the God of hosts. The tithing scriptures talks about the, the God of hosts will rebuke the devourer. Yes. Who, the God of hosts, what does that mean, the God of hosts? The Lord of hosts. He invoked the angelic armies of God. When he said that, he came in the name of the God that has all those angels and they helped me before and I'll help you. Hey, I'm going to kill that guy. I don't care how big he is. I'm coming at him in the name. And he dropped him like a bad habit right in the middle of the... Praise God. So, I mean, the man's good with that slingshot. He had to be because the Bible said he used it while he was running towards the giant. He was running. But he didn't, he was good, had a lot of practice. He picked up five stones and didn't need but one. Amen. Why? He had the name. He knew, the, he knew the name. Glory to God. He had a name. And because of his reverence for that name, and we've, we've not had that kind of reverence, but we're, we're going to regain that. When the scribes of old would write the name of God, they would get up and go bathe and put on clean clothes yes. just to write that precious. Yes. Yes. The name that's above every name. Yes. Yes. The, our, we use the name God all the time, but that is relatively recent. It came out of German theology, God, G-O-T. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You, Lord. Jehovah Raha. Araha. He is my shepherd. Yes. Jehovah Jireh. He sees. He doesn't just provide, he sees and provides. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. I am the Lord that healeth thee. For healing to have passed away, God would have had to have changed his name, and that is not going to happen. Come on. <laughs> Amen. 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 Jehovah Sitzkanu, he is my righteousness. Jehovah Shalom. Oh, I love this one. He is my peace. That word Shalom is translated prosperity. It's translated well-being. It's translated overwhelmingly prosperous. Glory to God. 
And it's Christian people that got the idea that, that God and poverty were tied together with a short rope. That's a lie from hell. Absolute lie. The way it's best described, I learned this from, from Billy Brim, who went to Israel and studied Hebrew. <clears throat> and this is the way they teach um, English speaking um, people that need to learn Hebrew. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Oh, isn't that good? Yes. Nothing, well, sure it's good. It's the name of a good God. He is absolute good. <clears throat> Jehovah Shammah, he is present. His spirit is in this room right now. His spirit is healing in this room right now. His spirit is healing out online right now. His work is being done all over the world right now by him, by his spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He will never leave me nor forsake me. Jehovah Nisi, he's my canopy. He's my covering and his banner over me is love. That love is my banner. Praise God. Jehovah Sabaoth, here it is. That's not Sabbath. It's Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the angelic armies of God. In the little book of Malachi, it's used 22 times, especially in the tithing scriptures. Well, tithing is in the old covenant. No, tithing started in the garden. The first murder was over the tithe. This is an ordinance of God. No, I don't have to tithe. I'm privileged to tithe. And I think about it a lot of times. I say, Lord, come on, Lord. You know, do you know what the tithe off that'll be? <laughs> yeah, glory to God. Yes, the angelic armies of God. Those names, there are many, many more names. So I have a whole list of them. But those are the redemptive names of the Most High. He that dwells in the place and the shadow of the Most High God. There's no higher. There's no higher office. Jesus exalted from hell to the throne. And that's what happened to you. And that's what happened to me, thank God. Headed to hell on skids. And that day, it changed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. All right. Now then, now I'm saying all of this because I'm talking about the name and the using of that name and learning how to use that name. And we have to go back to recurrent training in the Bible. Yes. We have to yes. read it and study that name. We have to study the book of Hebrews. We have to look up the word name and just go all the way through the Bible and see whose name works and whose doesn't. Hallelujah. Recurrent training on faith, recurrent training on the name. Anyway, now then, let's go to Acts chapter 3. Now, you remember what happened in the third chapter of the book of Acts. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being three o'clock in the afternoon. 
a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Why? Why did he expect to receive something from them? Jesus went in and out of that temple over and over and over and over. And he was a temple beggar, which meant he had every right to be there. And you know how many times Jesus just pointed to Judas and said, come on. But the man didn't get healed under Jesus' ministry. Now, isn't that amazing? So he saw Peter and John and he thought, here come my boys. No, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm expecting something from them. Oh, I know, I know they're going, I know these boys now, they, they, oh yeah. They're followers of Jesus and, and, and I know, glory to God. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Now you could get into that. That I don't, that's not necessary now. But such as I have, I have, such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus, the anointed one of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. Why the right hand, Brother Copeland? What difference does it make? <laughs> Don't start that. Just little, little wicked side issues that just sidetrack you. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Yeah. Glory to God. Walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. Yeah. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. I wonder. Oh, I wonder. What is that? That's a sign and a wonder. Makes people wonder. And wonder is not faith. And miracles don't cause faith. They cause people to wonder and investigate. That's right. yes. When Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, you men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness, this didn't happen because I'm an apostle. He didn't have being an apostle on his mind. He had Jesus and this man, this man before whom he had walked many, 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 many times. Every time he went to temple, he walked past this man. I mean, he, wa he saw him and gave him money. I dare say he gave him money while he was in the fishing business because he was a wealthy man then. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. 
Being an apostle had nothing in the world to do with this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name have made this man strong whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I said, thank you, Lord yeah. Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Now you go over to the fourth chapter, and as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed. The same ones that were wondering, Jesus got up and preached and they found out the power was in that name and they had heard him preach just days before and they began to realize what these people have been saying all the time is true. His yeah. name can do anything yeah. he can do. Amen. His name can do anything that he did. His name can do anything that he said. Faith in that name is having faith in Jesus. You have a free resource to help you study and apply the Bible-based truths you just heard. Download the BVOV broadcast study notes today at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Collect the notes from each week and use them in a group Bible study. Use the message outline to teach from. Discuss the scriptures and key points with your family of believers. Gain understanding from all the teachings on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Get the whole week of notes today at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Whether you've remained constant and confident in the face of what is happening in the world in your life, or have felt the pressure of fear try to take control of your thoughts and conversations, understanding and emphasizing the authority we have through the name of Jesus and how to use His name changes everything. In the Power of the Name package, Kenneth Copeland teaches on the foundational scriptures and revelation that taught him to use the name of Jesus since the beginning of his ministry in 1967. Included is a six message audio series titled Jesus, the Name Above Every Name, with a companion study guide of topical overviews, outlines, questions, and space to take notes as you listen to the teachings. As part of the family of God, you have the right to use the name of Jesus and all the power that is behind it to change habits, mindset, and the physical world around you. With the power of God released in your life through speaking the name of Jesus, your life will be transformed. Request your free copy of The Power of the Name of Jesus Package, an MP3 series with a study guide from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. As a member of the family of God, you have the right and authority to use that name and walk out your victory. Go to kcm.org.uk slash TV special or call 01-225-787310. Free offer is good for 30 days. Charges for postage may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Today, Brother Copeland talked about the different names of God. You see, he is everything we need and so much more. God is our shepherd. He's our provider, our healer. He's our righteousness, our peace. And Jesus made a way for you to have all that. And it's as simple as making the quality decision to receive him and all he is into your heart. If you've never been born again, then today's the day of your salvation. I want to lead you in a prayer. Just say this out loud after me. Just say, Father in heaven, I come to you in Jesus name. And I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. 
I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord. I repent and I receive your forgiveness, your cleansing. Take my life, Lord Jesus. Do something with it and fill me with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen to me. If you prayed that prayer today, you are born again. You're saved. And you're saying saved from what? Saved from hell in eternity, saved from hell on earth. And you can have days of heaven right now on this earth and you can have heaven in the presence of God for all of eternity. And right now in this moment, your spirit was recreated and you were named after God. And the name of Jesus became your name. You're in the family. And we want to help you learn more about that. We want to help you develop faith in that name. And that's why Kenneth Copeland Ministries has put together some free resources for you. And we call it the Salvation Package. It's a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And along with this book, we're going to send you a couple of little brochures that are just here to help you learn how to read and how to study your Bible and really how to find out who you are in Jesus and who Jesus is in you. So to request your your free salvation package. Do it today on kcm.org. And then use this website as a resource for word-based teaching. You see, you can search by topic. You can watch videos. You can read articles. And as you do this, what's going to happen is you're going to build your faith. You are going to grow in your understanding of the Word of God, and you're going to find out who God really is. You're going to find out the truth about who He is, and it's not just going to be a bunch of opinions and a bunch of religious theory that maybe you've been hearing maybe for your whole life. But when you dig into God's Word, you find out who He said He is. You find out who Jesus is and who He wants to be for you. All of it's right in here, and all of it is available to you. And that's why KCM, that's why this ministry exists. That's why this broadcast exists. That's why KCM.org exists, to get the Word and the truth into your life. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today, everybody. We'll see you again next time. Until then, remember that Jesus is Lord. Request your free salvation package today. Email us at partners at kcm.org.uk. 2021 is the year of the local church, a year of divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery. Find something life-giving on kcm.org, your study center for victory. View the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcasts on demand and study along with the daily broadcast notes or download the audio podcasts to listen on the go. Watch prior KCM events for hours with truth going in your eyes and ears wherever you are. Get real help for real life problems Follow our guide to believe, speak, pray, learn, and apply your way to results from your couch, desk, or kitchen table. Stay focused on truth by reading the devotional from faith to faith every day. Read interactive BVOV magazines and click to unlock more content in each issue. Get a faith boost from testimonies of real life success from people just like you. Find information on what partnership means and take advantage of the resources provided just for you. Read archives of Kenneth Copeland's partner letter and download free books from our bonus library. Over 50 titles available to read on your phone, computer, or e-reader. KCM.org meets you where you are.